Have you ever wondered the top secret growth hacks that people use to take their channels from nothing to millions and millions of subscribers? I have wondered that every day of my life. Wow, really? Yes. Well, here on this channel, we are going to expose those tactics and you might actually find they're not so secret after all. They're actually quite intuitive. Hmm. And she has not seen these tips, so I'm going to get her reaction and see if she agrees. Or maybe she'll call me out and say I'm crazy because she's been a huge part in growing this channel as well. <laughs> so these are framed negatively. And there's a positive reason for it, if that makes any sense. So the first one, <laughs> if that made no sense, is to get less views. <laughs> And at first that makes absolutely no sense, but let me give you the context. It's the whole concept in that when you start, you shouldn't try to attract everyone. Rather, you should try to get less views by making your content more niche, I believe the word would be, and just focus on capturing that one specific audience. Makes sense. Makes sense? It's niche, by the niche. way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would totally agree with that because a lot of times people start out and I think they're posting just anything they want, anything that they are interested in. So for example, if I posted videos on traveling and also posted videos on soap making and blah, 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 other people are gonna be like, yes, I love traveling, but then there's so much more. Yeah. And it's just like, they subscribe and they're like, why is this lady posting soap videos? <laughs> As you get more popular, and you start creating videos in these wider niches, you have a higher chance of ranking and being successful in that. So if you're trying to be everything for everybody, you're probably going to be end up being, was that a sentence? You're probably going to be, you're, <laughs> you're probably going to end up not being anybody at all because you're too broad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so number two is to post less. So don't post as many videos. Okay. And let me explain why. I was gonna say, you need to explain a little. <laughs> so I think the more quantity you have, you're pressured to get them out quickly and quality is hit. Mm -hmm. There are some cases though, where sometimes you won't put like any effort really into a video. Like, I mean, you'll still record it, but like you won't edit it. You haven't like scripted it out or yeah, anything like that. Viral. You haven't planned it. <laughs> A lot of times those ones do really, really good. Yeah. Like, why do you think that is? Do you think it's because it's more like down to earth and yeah. some more people so, like that? At least for, for me and my experience, sometimes I find if I try to do, do a video a little bit too much, you know, I put too much effort into it. I plan it out too much. It becomes not authentic. Robotic. Yeah. Boring. And, and the editing can just be this much. And then the videos I, I put less effort into, I just got to get it out quickly. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones people connect with. Better. So, so you need a good I middle ground a, yeah, between the two ground. because there's one video that did really well. It yeah. was the how to erase <laughs> it, whatever <laughs> and, it did, and it was the worst video I think I've ever seen in my life, but it did really super good. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are some videos where you put hours and hours and hours of time into it and they don't do very well because it's overly done. And then there's the perfect in between where it's like I actually put some effort into this, but I'm still making it down to earth and like I'm a real person, not just like a robot. Also with that, there's times where I'll post a ton of videos and then I'll just fall off the face of the earth. If instead of doing that, I just had a consistent posting schedule and my overall number of videos was less, I can guarantee you I'd be at a higher spot mm -hmm. now if I just did one video a week since I started. I agree with that so much, like 100%. Yeah. But that's so important. Yeah. So that's my mistake, and that's why we're doing this video every Tuesday. So be sure to subscribe, click that little bell thingy. Number three. Is this a bad one? <laughs> Longer is better. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> you better not put that in there. <laughs> Even at previous companies I've worked with, a lot of pressure to try to condense the information as much as possible to basically give this power nutshell video, like two minutes of content. And typically people don't connect with those because it's, it's like an encyclopedia almost, right? So I'm not telling you to fluff your content up with 18 minutes of junk and two minutes of content. I'm just saying, instead of just cramming a bunch of information in a small time frame, 
talk more about examples or stories or why it's important, give some history, some context, and make your videos 10 minutes as an example. I don't really have much to say for that one because I totally agree. You agree? Mm -hmm. That's good. Can a video be too long? Can a video be too long? I mean, I'm sure if, if you're filling it with stuff that's not valuable, so if you're just like a content farm. So uh, don't be like five minute crafts. <laughs> My highest performing video right now is over 10 hours long, and that's a C++ programming crash course. So, blows my mind. All my videos have always been, you know, 5 to 15 minutes long. I put one that's 10 and a half hours, and yeah, it immediately went to the top. So I think part of this is, one, YouTube wants people on their platform, right? So they're going to prioritize longer videos that keep people on their website. And two, YouTube is largely being used as a replacement for TV. You know, you'll sit down maybe during lunch or dinner or whatever, and you'll watch 10, 20, 30 minute videos, no problem. Us. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's what we do at least. <laughs> Hashtag Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go buy his merch. So that perfect length, I would say, is probably 10 minutes. That's because once you hit that 10 minute mark, <laughs> you can do post-roll ads and mid-roll ads. You cannot do that on videos under 10 minutes, at least at the time of this posting. I don't think you can do that though if you're a small channel. So if we're talking about someone who's just starting out, who's trying to get oh, 100 okay, yeah. followers. Yeah, when you're first starting out, you might not be monetizing, but you might wanna set up your content so that once you can mm -hmm. monetize, you can go back, you can add those post-roll ads and start making mm -hmm. some income. Which actually rolls me into point four, which is that, I forget. <laughs> Monetization is actually a good thing for the viewer and the content creator. So is it in the best interest of the viewer for there to be no ads on a video? No, because then the person can't make more videos because they're broke. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are getting comments of people saying like, oh, you're monetizing, you sell out. That's a bunch of baloney, and those are not the kind of people you want on your channel anyways. Yeah, so just ignore it and let them move on. True followers want to support creators financially, and as a result, will be happy to sit through an ad. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not going to be like, yeah, this is so much fun. It's not a bad thing to be sponsored. Yes, you want to be careful with how you pitch the sponsorship and what kind of brands you accept on your channel. But when you get sponsored by a company, you're not being a sellout. You're enabling yourself to create more content by getting the finances. You're able to either do it full time or get better gear or whatever it might be. And that can be a, a validation of your channel. So for example, this channel has been sponsored by big names like IBM, Oracle, as well as a lot of smaller companies. And that basically says like, I don't know the word, but you know. <laughs> you don't want to say like, I'm a big deal, but. <laughs> it's a validation of the quality of your content. Yeah. Back when I was a kid, I used to skate and like all the big skaters would get sponsored by a particular skateboard company or brand. And that was always like my dream. Like even though I couldn't even like do a kickflip or anything, like the idea that you can get paid just to use a certain skateboard or something, that just blew my mind. Getting that sponsorship is like a check mark saying, you've made it, mm -hmm. you, you're making good content. You're worthy of having these brands reach out to you and, and pay you money. One thing I wanted to add about monetizing your videos, YouTube wants to make money and they make their money through advertisements on these videos. So I don't know the details of the YouTube algorithm, but it would make sense if YouTube prioritizes videos that are monetized because that's where they're making their money from. So keep that in mind with, with the monetization. So you really want to hit that thousand subscribers and certain views, like forget the know. watch. <laughs> like you have to have a thousand subscribers and a certain amount of watch minutes in like a year time frame in order to get monetized. So when you start out, you really want to strive to do that first. Like be like, this is my goal. I need a thousand subscribers. I need this many watch minutes. And then hit that and you're like, Psh. I'm yeah. free now. <laughs> <laughs> Start just relax, roll like thousands of dollars yeah. every month. Point five. Now this one's gonna sound really bad up front. No, no. <laughs> Stop caring what your audience wants. That sounds perfect though. <laughs> you think so? Yes. 
Like, I mean, to an extent. Like, you want to know what kind of content that they want so that they're going to watch it. But it shouldn't be all about them all the yeah. time. There's been many times where we will get comments like, I don't want to see this content, or why aren't you making this anymore, or why are you making this anymore? And it's simply because we don't think it's valuable. Sometimes it can be overwhelming to be like, oh, did we make a mistake making this? Or are we making a mistake not making this? But ultimately it's up to us. There's always going to be a lot of people that will tell you to do something different mm -hmm. no matter what you do. There's been many times where we've had criticism comments that were nice though, that we could actually read and not feel like crap about ourselves, <laughs> but also learn from it and be like, okay, we can change this next time. But when it's like, uh, your video is terrible and you're a terrible person and I hate you so much, <laughs> we're not gonna read those comments. We're gonna disregard yeah. those. Now, as you grow, you might change your style of content and then immediately people are gonna be like, oh, you changed, Ugh. Ignore that crap. And even if you make the best content, people are going to complain. So growth hack for that one is just ignore the haters and you have to realize that you can choose the audience you're trying to target. Don't always think the audience you have to target are the people already watching your videos. Mm -hmm. So did we cover everything? Okay. <laughs> Is this what people need to get to 100K? Sales? I think 100% yes, because... Thank you. If you've enjoyed this content. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, thank you. <laughs> if there are any other growth hacks we forgot, just let us know in the description. Or <laughs> go leave a comment if we forgot any growth hacks that you think would be beneficial for a, a new YouTube creator. I'm gonna go take a nap. All right. You go do that. And I'm gonna go in here and start hacking my, my YouTube growth. Okay, have fun. Thanks for watching. Come back next Tuesday. Peace out.